Hello and welcome. My name is John Recknagel. I'm an application specialist for our concrete segment. And today we're going to be modeling a precast vault. Let's jump right in. Starting off with a hollow concrete column section. It is the P. I'm doing a, basically an 8 foot by 4 foot with the 6 inch walls. First, after you drop in your hollow column, we're going to model in the keyway. So to do that, we're going to do that using the poly beam. I'm using this trapezoidal shape here. Basically, I'm going to start here and just kind of trace around my section in the interior. I'm going to stop short of where I started. Very important to stop short. And then now with direct modification, I'm just going to basically pull this uh, section together. Now I can come to my edit tab and I can do a part cut. I can select on my vault and then select on my poly beam, just like that. So I can now take my poly beam and delete it out. I no longer need it. Now I essentially have the female joint for the vault keyway. Next thing we can do is model the base slab. So to do that, come to the concrete and then slab. I'm going to start by holding control, coming off this point one foot, holding control again and clicking. That will basically allow me to start at one foot over and one foot up. Now I can just basically draw in a 10 by 6 slab, middle mouse. So now I essentially have a slab here. I'm just going to make this a 6 inch slab. And then I'm going to come to my edit tab and do added material. I'm going to attach my vault to my bottom slab. So now I have one kind of monolithic section here. So this is going to be for my bottom. Now we're, let's do a kind of repeat for our top section here. So I'm going to drop in a column right next to it. And now for my slab on the top, I'm basically just going to trace around the interior here and then middle mouse. I can do the added material, edit, added materials, select my vault and then select the interior, middle mouse. Now I have my top vault section. Now I can basically click on uh, this section here. I'm going to move it on top of my other one. And grab this corner here and move it to up here. So now they're stacked up. But now we're going to do kind of a cool trick. We're going to lower this section inside and then do a kind of a reverse part cut to get the mail section. So uh, to do that, I'm going to clear this out and um, I'm basically going to repick my move from this top corner down to this bottom section, but I'm only going to move it in my Z here. So now I know that this section just needs to move down two inches. If I go back to a solid rendered view, you'll see that they are kind of clashing with one another. So if I go edit part cut, select part to be cut, this can be my top, and then select cutting part is going to be my bottom. Now in doing so, if I just kind of hide out this bottom section, hide. You'll see we've created this male joint end. So now we have the male on this side. Redraw the view and hide this one. And then we have our female kind of accepting joint on the bottom. Now let's go ahead and uh, detail out some rebar. So starting off, I'm going to model in um, some crossing bars here. I'm going to get my kind of my exterior bars around the outside middle mouse. You see we've got that, uh, but this is kind of unrealistic to have this one continuous stirrup here. So what we're actually going to do is add a splitter. We're going to add at the midpoint here, and then I'm going to flip it to the other side and add a splitter here. So now we essentially have a U-bar on the left side and then a U-bar on the right side. Now I'm going to model in some bars by face. And I'm just going to come to this near face, and then I'm going to be switching my axes depending on which uh, kind of side of the vault that I'm on. So starting off here, I'm going to do the long axes here. Drop those bars in on both sides. Now I'm going to come to the, my short side here. Drop in those bars and short side, drop in the bars. Now what we're going to do is we're going to basically extend these down and kind of create a hook so that they tie into the foundation slab. I'm going to uh, select on this rebar set. And if you don't see um, this kind of leg face visibility, you need to come here, 
uh, to the rebar display options, and then turn on your leg face visibility. And what that kind of allows us to do is we can now just click and drag on these edges. So if I want to extend this edge down a certain distance, let's say four inches, I can extend it down. So I'm basically going to kind of step around to all of these rebar sets here and just extend them down slightly four inches into my foundation slab. And last one. Now I'm going to apply an end detail. And the end detail will basically create that hook. Now to get it to bend uh, kind of the way the orientation that I have, I did a custom hook and I did a negative 90. By default it wants to do a positive 90 which would kick it inside. We want a, a negative 90 and then you can specify the length here. So right now I just put an 8 inch bend on it. Um, if you wanted something different you can just specify that here. You know 12 inch, whatever the case may be, 10 inch. And once you set this up then now you'll notice as I go in and uh, select the next group, the next rebar set, and I apply that same end detail, the same settings will stick with it. So I'm just kind of stepping around here, applying those end details to hook in. And there we have it. Let's reinforce our base slab with a rebar set by face. And let's do uh, both of our axes, short and long. And I'm just going to do it on this uh, near face as well. So going from a rendered view on the bottom here, you can see I've got my checkerboard letting me know that it's going in both of my axes. Single click, and now we have our foundation slab reinforced in both planes. So this uh, bottom vault is basically done. Now let's redraw our view, and then what I'm going to do is actually hide away this bottom slab. And now we're just going to kind of uh, rinse and repeat here. This top section I'm going to model a little bit differently, mainly with crossing bars. You'll notice when we have the crossing bar selected, as we hover kind of over our shape, the uh, available legs light up for us. So starting off, I'm going to do the same thing. Select my exterior, drop those in. I'm going to do a splitter. And again, I'm going to split these at the midpoint of each section. So we basically have a U-bar far side, U-bar near side. And then now I'm going to create a... Um, bar around the outside. So by default when you select the crossing bars and you select it in, it's going to select all the leg face, all the leg faces. So what we want to do is click this button here, unselect all legs. And then now I'm going to select on this leg, hold control, select on the top leg, hold control, select the outside leg, and then middle mouse. That will drop in uh, kind of my U bars going in this plane. Now if I hover over my cross section in this plane, I can unselect the legs, select this leg, hold control this leg, hold control the far leg, and then middle mouse. And now we essentially have all of our all of our rebar sets modeled. I can redraw the view, and now we have a finished vault. Alright, now most vaults have openings going through them in some fashion, so what I did here is just copied the vault over to show you that you can create these openings at any given time, uh, either whether the piece is fully detailed out or whether you want to cut the openings first and then reinforce. It's probably best practice to get your geometry done first, get your holes and everything in there and then reinforce, but sometimes you don't always have that luxury or things may change, so I'm going to be kind of showing both instances here. So starting off, what I like to do best is by doing part cuts. So if we were to have a a section going through here. Uh, basically what I'm doing is modeling a beam and then we can just change the profile. Let's say we have a 18 inch pipe going through here. So I can just change to a D18 kind of cross section of a beam here and then I'm just going to drop it down into my piece let's say negative 20 inches. So 20 inches from the top going all the way through now when you're doing this method, uh, kind of a, a good rule of thumb is just to make sure that the piece is extending on both sides. So I'm just going to make this 10 foot and tell it to extend both ways. So we've got kind of a decent section sticking out of each way. Now I can come to my edit tab and do a part cut. I can select on my shape and then select on my cutting part. And then just like that, if I delete the beam away, now we have a circular hole running through the entire section. 
All right, now that we've seen how to do it without reinforcing, let's jump over here to see how we would do it if you already have the reinforcing detail. So concrete beam, I'm going to come and drop it in right in the center. And then I'm going to drop this down the same 20 inches. Using direct modification, DM my keyboard, I can make this element 10 feet long and do about both sides. So it's sticking out. Now this is the one step that we need to do differently here. With our view transparent, and when we come to edit, part cut, Tecla saying select objects to be cut. Now it's very important that we window over not only our concrete shape, but then also our rebar sets. And we're going to do a lower right to upper left to make sure that we grab anything uh, that our window touches. So I'm going to draw a window like this. You can see I've grabbed uh, basically all rebar sets in this top section and also my concrete shape. I'll let go. Now pick cutting part. I will select on my beam. And just like that, if I delete this uh, section away, you'll see now we have a hole through our section. And the nice way, the nice kind of thing uh, about doing it this way is that Tecla is also you know, readjusting any reinforcement that is required. It's holding cover where it should be and uh, kind of doing everything that you would expect it to. Now, if things need to change, uh, you, you can do a window motion over this opening and select all of these, all, um, all these openings. So what Tecla is kind of doing behind the scenes is it's creating an individual cutout for each of these different rebar sets and then also for the concrete geometry shape. So you can see in the bottom, I actually have four objects selected here. But what's nice about doing it this way is you can just change the profile here. So if I wanted to do a square opening, 24 by 24, I can now just do that and then change it to rendered view and all of the rebar is going to adjust accordingly. So that's how you would cut out openings. Obviously the openings can go in any direction. You probably have something on the top, the ladder coming up, maybe some holes or pipes coming through the side, but the same premise will apply. All right, I put some finishing touches on this vault. I threw some dog bones in here. So I'm going to select on all my dog bones and add to the assembly. And then I just cut in this last opening here on the top. And then now what we're going to do is we're going to grab this top assembly here and we're going to add it as a subassembly to the bottom. So now we essentially have one large assembly here that's going to uh, kind of encompass both shapes, all the appropriate weights, build materials, rebar, and all of that. Um, so now let's go ahead and create some drawings. So to do this, I have a vault created that I'm going to create the drawing settings from. So I can single select on my bottom section and I'm, I'm actually going to use the cloning feature. I can select clone and then come to my vault shape here. Clone from select to drawing and then press clone. Tecla will say perform numbering. Go ahead and perform that. And then I'm also going to, while I'm here, I'm going to clone the rebar drawing. So I got a shape drawing and then a rebar drawing. So the same process, come here, select the rebar drawing and press clone selected. You see we have a CN116 created and then this will create the sheet one and two. So both of these are cloned. Let's jump in and see what we got. All right, so here we are. As you can see, the clone did extremely well with uh, kind of cutting the views that we had from the previous vault and kind of updating the dimension strings, showing the openings and the dog bones. You can see we have our build material over here on the side, obviously all of our concrete parameters, everything here. So you know, this this drawing is, is pretty much done for the most part. You may need to come in here and add a couple dimensions. Looks like, looks like we're missing one for the opening. So we can always just come in here and quickly detail those out. But apart from adding a couple dimension strings and things like that, this drawing is basically done. So I'm just going to slap this dimension on here. Maybe move it out of the way a bit. And this drawing would be ready to send off to production. So now let's take a look at our rebar drawings. All right, so here we are in the rebar drawings. As you can see, the cloning did another excellent job of placing these views that we had in our previous vault. 
We have our front, bottom and top, left, bottom and top, right, and so on. And then we have our bottom foundation slab, and then we have our top kind of integral slab. Now, the object representation that I have set up right now is basically going to colorize your bar based upon the mark number that it's given. So that way you can quickly identify different bars based upon color. If you do not like this view, you can always just press B on your keyboard to see that traditional black and white. The B again will go to a grayscale, and then B a third time will go back to the color view. But now, as you can see, we are in the reinforcement drawing. We have our rebar bend schedule, which Tecla is automatically populating for you, all of your standard CS CRSI bends, and the appropriate columns filled in, along with any build materials and straight bar that you may have. But now it's just as easy as going through and adding any callouts or details that you may have on some of these bars, and you can send this one off to production. All right, guys, that is going to conclude our presentation for today on how to model a precast vault. Hope you guys learned a thing or two, and thank you for watching.